Welcome to our latest video on the Ionic product of water, KW. This video is suitable for A-level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to explain the significance of the Ionic product of water, KW, and understand that its value changes with temperature. You should also be able to use the value of KW to calculate the pH of water at different temperatures, as well as the pH of strong alkalis. Now in our previous videos on acids, we've learned that strong acids such as hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid and nitric acid totally dissociate into H plus ions when you put them in water. And the more H plus ions in solution, the more acidic a substance is. Now the pH is equal to minus log of the H plus concentration. So the more H plus ions present, the lower the pH. Now, a weak acid is one which partially dissociates in water. And when an acid dissociates, it's an equilibrium process, so therefore has an equilibrium constant. Now, if we consider the weak acid HA that splits up into H plus ions and A minus ions, the equilibrium constant, the acid dissociation constant, would be equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of A minus ions over the concentration of the acid HA. And the more dissociation that takes place, the more hydrogen ions and anions there will be, and the larger the value of the acid dissociation constant Ka. So the stronger the weak acid, the bigger the value of Ka. Now in our previous videos, we've looked at Ka values and compared different acids in terms of their dissociation. We've also learnt that these values often have a big variation in their size and therefore a new term is considered pKa which is equal to minus the log of the Ka value. Now the stronger the weak acid the bigger the Ka value and the smaller the pKa value. Now in this video we're going to introduce a new dissociation constant Kw which is called the ionic product of water. And we can use Kw to work out the pH of water at different temperatures and also the pH of strong alkalis. So now let's look at the ionic product of water Kw in more detail. Now even after purification processes to remove all impurities, water can still conduct a small amount of electricity and this shows that there are still ions dissolved in it. Now we cannot remove these ions as they're produced by water itself and there's an equilibrium process which takes place where the water dissociates or breaks down to form H plus and OH minus ions. And you can see from the equation here that H2O in a reversible process splits up into H plus ions and OH minus ions. Now only a small amount of water molecules split up into H plus and OH minus ions and this is because the reaction lies mainly to the left hand side so almost all the water exists as water molecules with a very small amount of ions. Now the equilibrium constant for this reaction can be expressed as the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions divided by the concentration of water. Now the amount of water that dissociates is tiny and the concentration of water can be considered to be constant and therefore we can remove it from the expression. Now this new expression we call Kw is the ionic product of water and Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions. Now the value of Kw, like all equilibrium constants, changes with changes in temperature. And at 25 degrees C, the ionic product of water Kw has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 mole squared dm to the minus 6. Now this value of Kw at 25 degrees C is the reason that water has a pH of 7 at this temperature. At different temperatures the value of Kw changes and so does the pH of water. So we're now going to show how the ionic product of water at 25 degrees C, which is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14 mole squared dm to the minus 6, 
gives us a pH value of 7 at that temperature. So Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions. And if we look at the equation, H2O splitting up in a H plus and OH minus ions, you can see that it's a one-to-one -one ratio of H plus ions to OH minus ions. So therefore, the concentration of H plus ions and the concentration of OH minus ions is the same. So therefore, we can say that 1 times 10 to the minus 14, the value of Kw, is equal to the concentration of H plus squared. And if we square root this, we get the concentration of H plus ions. And that will be 1 times 10 to the minus 7. Now, if we minus log this value for H plus concentration, so pH is equal to minus the log of 1 times 10 to the minus 7, it gives us a pH value equal to 7. And that's how we work out the pH of water at this temperature. So now let's test your understanding of this with a practice question. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answer. So this practice question is asking you to work out the pH of water at 100 degrees C. And the Kw is 5.13 times 10 to the minus 13 mole squared dm to the minus 6. So Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions. Kw has a value of 5.13 times 10 to the minus 13. And as you can see from the equation, the concentration of H plus ions and the concentration of OH minus ions are equal. It's a one-to-one -one ratio in the equation. So therefore, we can write this as 5.13 times 10 to the minus 13 is equal to the concentration of H plus squared. Now if we square root this, we'll get the value of the concentration of H plus. And the concentration of H plus ions, when I square root 5.13 times 10 to the minus 13, is equal to 7.16 times 10 to the minus 7. Now if I minus log this value, 7.162 times 10 to the minus 7, I'll get the pH of water at 100 degrees C. And when I put these values into the calculator, pH equal to minus log of 7.162 times 10 to the minus 7, I get a pH of 6.14. And that's the pH of water at 100 degrees C. Now we've just seen that the ionic product of water can be used to calculate the pH of pure water at different temperatures. Now the ionic product of water can be also used to calculate the pH of a strong alkali. Now when a strong base dissolves in water, it totally splits up into OH minus ions. So here we have the alkali NaOH, and this splits up into Na plus and OH minus ions. Now you can see from the equation that the ratio of OH minus ions to NaOH is 1 to 1. So the concentration of NaOH is equal to the concentration of OH minus ions. And we can use the ionic product of water to calculate the concentration of H plus ions in the same solution. And from this, we calculate the pH of the solution. Now Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions. And at 25 degrees C, this has a value of 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now if we rearrange this equation, the concentration of H plus ions is equal to Kw divided by the concentration of OH minus ions. 
And if we know the concentration of NaOH, we know the concentration of OH minus ions because it's the same. And once we know the concentration of OH minus ions, using Kw, Kw divided by the concentration of OH minus ions gives me the concentration of H plus ions. And the concentration of H plus ions is what I need to work out the pH of the solution because all I do then is minus log the concentration of H plus ions. So now let's take you through how this works with an example calculation. So here I'm asked to calculate the pH of an NaOH solution at a concentration of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed at 25 degrees C. Now as you can see from the equation here, NaOH splits up into Na plus ions and OH minus ions. And the ratio of NaOH to OH minus ions is 1 to 1. So the concentration of NaOH is 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. So the concentration of OH minus ions is also 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed. So Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus ions. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions, which is 0.1. Now if I rearrange this, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0.1 gives me the concentration of H plus ions and I need the concentration of H plus ions to work out the pH. So the concentration of H plus ions is 1 times 10 to the minus 13. So the pH is equal to minus log of the H plus concentration. So it's minus log of 1 times 10 to the minus 13 which gives me a pH of 13 for a solution of 0.1 mole per decimeter cubed at 25 degrees C. So now let's test your understanding of this with some practice questions. So read through the questions, pause the video, have a go at them, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's go for the answers to this practice question. So the first solution I have to calculate the pH for is a solution of one mole per decimeter cubed NaOH. Now NaOH splits them into Na plus ions and OH minus ions and Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees C. Now the concentration of NaOH is 1 mole per decimeter cubed, so the concentration of OH minus ions is also 1 mole per decimeter cubed. So Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus ions. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times 1.0 which is the concentration of OH minus ions and if I rearrange this 1 times 10 to the minus 14 over 1.0 is equal to the concentration of H plus and that gives me a concentration of H plus ions equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Now if I minus log the H plus concentration I get the pH so pH is equal to minus log of 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and that gives me a pH of 14. Now for question B, we're asked to work out the pH of a solution of 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed, NaOH. Now NaOH splits up into Na plus and OH minus ions, and the concentration of NaOH is 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed, so the concentration of OH minus ions is also 0.2 moles per decimeter cubed. Now Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions, and therefore Kw is 1 times 10 to the minus 14 at 25 degrees C. And that's equal to the concentration of H plus ions times the concentration of OH minus ions, which is 0.2. If I rearrange this, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0.2 is equal to the concentration of H plus ions. That comes to be equal to 5 times 10 to the minus 14 and if I minus log this value for the concentration of H plus ions I'll get the pH so pH is equal to minus log of 5 times 10 to the minus 14 which gives me a pH value of 13.3 now for the last question we have a solution of 0.5 moles per decimeter cubed NaOH 
So Kw is equal to the concentration of H plus times the concentration of OH minus ions. And 1 times 10 to the minus 14 is equal to the concentration of H plus ions times 0.5. Now if I rearrange this, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.5 will give me the concentration of H plus ions. And if I put these values into the calculator, 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 0 0.5 gives me a concentration of H plus equal to 2 times 10 to the minus 14. Now to get the pH, all I do is minus log this value. So the pH is equal to minus log of 2 times 10 to the minus 14, which gives me a pH value equal to 13.7. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to explain the significance of the ionic product of water, Kw, and understand that its value changes with temperature. You should also be able to use the value of Kw to calculate the pH of water at different temperatures, as well as the pH of strong alkalis. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radicemistry.